This conference will now be recorded. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Friday. Really do appreciate your time uh, coming together and, and uh, uh, late Friday afternoon. I guess there's no better way to, to, to close out a Friday than talking about RTD accountability stuff, huh? <laughs> uh, so again, I, uh, again, I see, well, we got a pretty good turnout, about 35 members um, so far, which is great. Uh, I would like, I'm just looking through, I'm going to do this before Deborah gives me a hard time for not introducing the RTD Accountability Committee members. I'm only, I'm only joshing with you, Deb. But uh, let me see here. So I know we have uh, Rod Bridges is on the line. He's, uh, uh, he's chair of the Finance Subcommittee. And I see Crystal Moreo, it's also present. She's co-chair of the the uh the full rtd accountability committee so crystal good to see you am i missing anybody any other committee members on the line mm -hmm. don't think so at least not yet anyway okay um hey so Jackie, I, is Emily with 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 cdot isn't she technically a member of the committee i see her on here who natalie Shido. Well, she's not a uh, member of the committee. She's she's staff. Uh, okay. with CDOT, yeah. That's provided yeah. by CDOT. Yeah, she's a she's a fellow uh, working at CDOT. And she's been. I'll I'll tell you what. She's been she's a tremendous me. asset for us. <laughs> We'd be lost without her. So I'm so happy she's here and uh, she's actually did some work for our upcoming uh, governance subcommittee agenda because uh, we're going to start talking about partnerships and the like. So FYI. Alrighty. So I'm gonna. Do the impossible here and try to share my screen it never works but just just uh, hang with me here for a second um linda there you go great okay i think we did it so thank you very much again. I, I would like uh, just to real quickly mention what the what the purpose and function of this of this um, this roundtable is today. You remember the last time we met, we we primarily um, just talked about some of the governance questions that the subcommittee was having conversations about. Today, I wanted to just take you through some of the some of the um, kind of the components of the of the proposed recommendation will be and get your feedback on that. Most notably. Um, Related to uh, the the, uh, the district boundaries and the like, and the conversations that we'll be we'll be having on uh, relate to that, um, I, I would like to state just from the just right from the outset that um, in, because of time constraints of this committee, we basically have about five months left in order to you know complete the tasks that have been assigned to us. Um, we, we're not we're not going in as depth as we. Um, we did for those that were involved with the with the tip dual model when we when we went through and reached all those conclusions and developed that that policy uh, simply because you know we just don't have the time. I think more than anything we 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 wanted to identify certain concepts that um, you know we believe that are constructive to 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 at least addressing some of the some of the issues slash concerns that the the, um, the the subcommittee has identified. And if there's interest um, when we submit this recommendation to the powers to be, if they're interested in that, the recommendation, of course, will be to to really run all the traps and develop a uh, a process which is which is suitable for all parties. So um, I, I just want to say that that you know it might not be to the to the level of detail that um, you guys remember when we did the dip, the tip tool model, but um, but I think we'll have enough information in there to kind of set a path for further conversation. Okay, so let me see here. So I'm just going to run through this slide deck real quick. Okay, so with regards to today's outline and what I want to talk about, um, as I mentioned, you know, we're in the process of developing our final um, sub, uh, subcommittee recommendation on the um, Sub-Regional Service Council's concept. And the components that I'm going to talk about today is the identified issues, which I talked about last time, 
kind of the purpose and role of what those sub-regional service councils would um, would take on, um, the council membership, boundary options um, that we've done some analysis on, and uh, local service resource allocation. So just as a reminder, um, the this RTD Accountability Committee was, was set up. It was a partnership between the RTD board, uh, the governor's office, and the transportation chairs in the legislature who came together and decided to uh, develop the regional RTD Accountability Committee, which is an independent committee of any of those three parties. And Dr. Cox's staff, we are we're facilitating and staffing this, this operation. It's been a tremendous amount of work for everybody, um, including the members of the committee, and we certainly appreciate their uh, commitment to um, um, really, you know, helping helping uh, us, RTD, and, and the other partners figure out some, some quality recommendations that we ultimately hope will um, will assist in RTD operations. So most so the, the full committee then um, created three subcommittees, and the three subcommittees were finance, operations, and uh, governance. So the conversations we're having today is related to the governance subcommittee and its tasks. So its main overlying task was to review the structure of RTD governance and executive leadership. And the committee has really uh, have identified kind of three main areas that, um, you know, they are referred to as identified issues that the, uh, the subcommittee wanted to address in some of their recommendations. And the committee has always asked itself, you know, what problems are we trying to solve, right? I mean, uh, so they want to make sure that the, the direction and the path that they're going is actually going to come up with a, with a viable solution or uh, suggest a solution for, for improvement. So the first area um, that they were trying to solve is this kind of, um, there was a profound interest in local communities and residents having an elevated voice in transit service planning. So they're, um, based on the conversations there, um, and any of the RTD accountability members that are on here want to weigh in, please do so, that um, they're, it kind of lacked a two-way communication. Um, they, there was a desire for there to be a more collaborative as, that aspect, um, collaborative partnership between RTD and local, local communities um, about service delivery and service changes. Um, and quite frankly, uh, it's one of those situations, it's um, the communities that are like, you know, help us help you, right? So maybe there's opportunities there where local governments can um, you know, partner with RTD, find funding solutions or any kind of service uh, solutions uh, in partnership together. Uh, equity, um, of course, is a big issue um, for the committee and uh, both social and geographic considerations should be included in uh, funding distribution amongst the, in, within the region as well as um, so, uh, you know, social justice issues and the like and equity of service throughout our community. And to build back confidence and trust. And I, I said this last time, I'll say it again. I don't think that's, it's only with RTD. It's certainly, there's a, there's a lack of confidence and trust right now, just in govern, government in general, and any opportunities we can have to help ratify or rectify that problem um, is, not, is not a bad thing. My slide, oh, there we go. We good? You guys see that purpose slide? Okay. So let's just talk about the, the, the sub-regional service council purpose. Um, so for those that are on the line that, especially local government staff that is on the line that's familiar with the Dr. Cog sub-regional forum concept, it's very similar to that, right? In, in that, um, uh, you know, what we, what the hope and desire of these, of these sub, sub regional service councils are is that they provide um, kind of a, um, it's a mechanism for that collaboration to occur out in the communities. It really, we would hope, uh, increase that two way communication between uh, local communities and RTD staff on, on, um, on possible service changes. So, 
So you see the second bullet point here is to make recommendations on proposed transit service changes. Uh, so, uh, you know, so the RTD board and the and their function, of course, they would be obviously the overriding and overlying umbrella as far as policy uh, for, for the agency. And um, they would utilize these sub-regional service councils to help them in determination primarily of, of transit service changes, but it's also um, an opportunity for for locally accessible public forums for transit user, users. So public comment, public hearings, um, just general uh, public input into the system, issues they might be having, uh, those types of things to be, be um, kind of vetted out at a more local level. Because um, as we talked about in our last round table, it's more likely that users of the system would be um, uh, more, more apt to come to these local level forums to to express their comments than probably coming downtown to an RTD board meeting, for example. It just provides an opportunity for a greater opportunity for for uh, public involvement. And last but not least, um, yeah, I at least, you know, we, we presented as part of the governance subcommittee this whole concept of community based transit planning. Um, and I think there's a real opportunity here uh, for the sub-regional councils to take on certain assignments. And this is just an example of one of those where the sub-regional council could take on um, you know, and develop community-based transit plans to identify transportation challenges or you know, gaps in the system, whether that be in low-income neighborhoods or not, um, just to, you know, I think it provides just, um, uh, um, you know, an, a, a, it, it, it provides an opportunity again for at a lower level geography to have those conversations with community-based organizations and the like to to be able to explore and find solutions at a more local level so that would be the purpose of the sub-regional council Ali, i don't know why it took so long to advance slides Well, I think sooner or later it should pop over here. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the membership of of the um, these sub regional councils, at least in concept. So, of course, um, it would have local government reps. I I would suggest to you that those would be elected officials, similar to what we have with our Dr. Cog sub regional forums. Um, transit u users should be a uh, a large component of this of this uh, of this council, um, those that live, work, and or go to school within the, count, the council district, um, individuals with disabilities that use fixed route. Uh, we make a distinction between fixed route and accessor ride users at the bottom, but basically those that represent the uh, disability community. Um, and you know, I think you know also on the board consideration should be given to a broad spectrum of interest and geography for example you know low-income neighborhoods communities of color um, uh, issues associated with low english proficiency to understand the complexities of riding public transportation for 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 those populations older adults veterans and the like and again those are just examples but i think ultimately you know what we hope to accomplish with this is it's that the councils themselves are representative of the community at large. Okay, so districts. So let's talk about this. What would that look like? You know, how would the districts be formed? And, and you know, how many districts should there be? And we've had a similar conversation to this last time. Um, and this whole concept of these sub-regional service councils really was born out of um, uh, the LA metro area and what we knew had exist out there. And quite frankly, Kathleen Bracky, I think that's that, that I know it's on the line. Um, it was her recommendation that we look at LA, LA metro um, transit for this concept. And, um, you know, so we're, so we're very interested in, you know, trying to divide up these, these service councils in a way that, you know, that makes sense of whether that um, it, you know, includes um, you know, equal population mix in there 
or and or um, you know communities are kept whole as much as possible within the districts um, how would they how can they or should they align with the RTD board districts you know those types of those types of concepts and and, and the like um, you know the, the LA metro area they have five service councils um, and now they're they're about 14 or 1500 square square miles their service area is um, the RTD area is about 2400 square square miles but there's a lot of you know very low density and quite frankly parkland within um, uh, of the RTD boundary too so it's not that not too different in a lot of respects although albeit we all know that the the density within the within the LA metro service area is much larger their population is significantly more than um, than what the uh, the RTD service area is so let's have a look we've looked at kind of two different examples of uh, of how um, you know these these districts might be established the first was based on county boundaries and uh, I listed just some pros and cons at least according to Doug Rex what those pros and cons might be um, so if we use county boundaries to establish the, the sub-regional service council districts um, you know the first first the pros it's a recognized geopolitical boundary of course um, so it'd be it's very easily easy to establish it's consistent with the Dr. Cog sub-regional forums and there's some opportunities for synergies to, uh, between the two and and community familiarity and what I mean by that is that the county communities within the counties that we've seen through our sub-regional process is that they you know they're familiar with each other they they know the players and they work um, it, they work extremely well together um, some of the cons associated with that would be um, the number of counties uh, within the RTD service area there are seven um, is seven seven councils uh, is that too many and we had this discussion last time I think we do have to be cognizant of, of RTD staff resources and it could be an issue um, with regards to you know fully um, um, you know having that staff support that's needed particularly as it relates to um, you know service delivery and the stuff to for staff to be able to you know meet with all these service councils and provide adequate enough information for for decisions to be made and communities um, as we know um, you know don't only reside in one county right there's several communities within our region that um, that reside in two Aurora for example uh, well Aurora re resides in three counties but there are several like that that um, that cross county boundaries and what are the complexities associated with that with uh, development of these service councils and last but not least the majority of bus routes operate in multi multiple counties um, we had a presentation the governance subcommittee did from RTD staff um, it might have been earlier this month um, about their their kind of core system and about 60 percent of their of their fixed route bus network is is multiple counties so that's a significant portion and how do you handle those conversations about routes that might cross into various service councils now there's mechanisms to do that and la metro kind of has a uh, um, you know a procedure in place for how that's done but it, it does add to the complexity so the next slide I'm going to show you just um, is a map of uh, you know what the oh shoot what those boundaries might what that might look like so if we were to divide this up by county so what you're seeing here is the internal trips that exist um, with, within each county so right at the top of the top hand left hand corner is uh, Boulder at 88 percent so I, I should give you a little background on what, where this information came from so this is Dr. Cog's um, 2020 travel traffic run so this comes out of our travel demand forecasting model and um, so it's based on it's not based on pre-COVID conditions um, but it is it's our 2020 run and uh, so you'll see a, a very large percentage of um, of uh, Boulder counties per, in the and again these sorry these are person trips so it's all modes it's not just transit it's all modes of transportation 88% um, or thereabouts um, stay internal to to the county of Boulder and you can see throughout the region 43% within Broomfield which is probably not not too surprising. But for the most part, we're looking at around, you know, upper 60s, lower 70s with regards to the internal trips. And and the reason, you know, that's it. It's an 
it's an interesting analysis to do like this because it just speaks to um you know kind of the 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 um um was what speaks to the travel patterns obviously within the county and opportunities to have conversations at the county level about service delivery doug i have a point of clarification yep are, is this trip making all trip making vehicle trip making yeah so all, it, it, not it is the, transit trip making i just want you to give us a correct. little okay thank you that's what i need right now yeah these these are person trips all modes um okay so so the next uh thing we looked at was travel shed and we had a good conversation with rt staff a couple of weeks back about the opportunities that associated with this and some of the pros um are that you know they're they're based on known travel patterns and i think anecdotally we all know that you know that, that our traffic patterns is fairly radial in nature um and uh you know it's just if you could really align it up, you know, uh, based on facilities within our region, and we we did some analysis that the the same data set out of our out of our transportation model um, to have a look at that and see if it was possible to divide up the region in various um, uh, districts. Um, and it because of because you know we're not we're not um, uh, predefined by a geopolitical boundary such as counties. Um, you can make fewer districts if you want. Of course, you can make more districts if you want as well. But it provides the opportunity for fewer, which I think it's uh, um, you know it's more palatable um, with regards to uh, being sensitive to RTD's uh, staff resources and the like. Um, I list this as a con. Boundaries built around facilities, but it's really not a, a con. Uh, you know, it it is it's a predefined it's not a predefined boundary, but that's also good too because you can move it around to. To uh, to accommodate, um, you know, whether that be as you see in the second bullet, the uh, you know community boundaries or ensuring that there's equal population within those districts, um, and also there's opportunities there to try to get as much synergy as we can with the RTD board districts as well. So the so the map that I'm going to show you next is just an example of a a scenario in which you know it's a four district um uh you know council council boundaries and so it's this fuchsia line right here if you can you can see that it's the fuchsia line that kind of divides it into four se segments so you have a southern section west north and east um excuse me i i would say that you know four is is the bare minimum um you know five six probably makes more sense and we can have more conversations about that and do some additional analysis. But if nothing else, I just wanted to show you guys, you know, again, some of the internal trip um, uh, analysis that we've seen. So in this sec sector one, this northern section, which basically includes all of Boulder, um, Broomfield, and good part of the of uh, Adams, 83% um, of the trips uh, internal are internal to internal trips they remain within that boundary and you can see what we did is that we kind of you know these are kind of pie shaped in nature and everything kind of uh, basically terminates at I think it's like Colfax and Broadway is basically what we did so it's basically it's, it's the CBD so that really provides an opportunity to um, um, to capture the vast majority of commuter trips in particular, uh, which was, which was, um, you know, I, I think if we did an analysis of, of commute trips using the county boundaries, I think you would see a little bit different um, percents than what we had with the, with all trip purposes. Um, so that, so the 83% in north, um, out east, you see 75% stay within that boundary, west 73 and, and, and 74 down south. Um, so they, so those percentages are, you know, a little bit higher, uh, probably by, you know, seven, eight, eight percent, nine percent overall. Um, so I thought that was interesting as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a viable option, right? And I think that's what we're, we're suggesting is that we'd like to bring forth in our recommendations, suggest a couple different ways that they, that, um, that the, the RTD service area could be divided up for these service councils.
Okay, the last last topic is uh, resource allocation. And um, we had a conversation at our last round table about funding allocation for these this air quotes local service, right? Um, and what should that look like? And I think the the comments we received back from you all is that you know there should be uh, some some um, consideration consideration to equitable distribution of resources throughout the entire district for local service um, uh, vulnerable populations as far as the percent of the the total it was was something that um, that you guys had mentioned last time that was important to have as part of this calculation. Um, population employment, of course, um, should be included. But more than anything, um, as was mentioned last time, you know, the process should be transparent in how that's done. That solves a lot of problems when people know going in what the inputs are and um, and how how the how uh, the outputs are calculated. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to mention, because we're not going to be taking uh, this component of the recommendation much further than that, than other than just to suggest that um, um, you know, there needs to be a, a conversation about equitable distribution of this. And the reason why is that RTD um, is scheduled to do a study um, over the next year, I think. And I know there's RTD staff in our line, they can provide a little more detail to study the, the supply and demand of, the, of service delivery within our region. Um, you know, of course, the, the actual supply of the revenue is the easier part of this equation because um, we can, we can, uh, you know, we can determine, you know, where the funding is coming from, the sales tax and use revenue and what, and the like. But the demand side is probably the, the, um, uh, the more complicated of that. Is that, you know, what mechanisms do you use to be able to show so user value out in the community? And I think that's the conversation uh, that that RTD staff would like to have as part of this, this, uh, this study to be able to be able to show residents um, out in in the region the value of the service that they're getting for the for the for the dollars that they're providing into the system and with that that is i believe that's my last slide um so at this point you know i'm i'm willing to have any questions you might have about any of those components um comments in general you'd, you'd like to make i just open it up to the floor and we can have it just an informal chat Hey Doug, this is Ron. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of questions in the chat box. I don't know if you want to take those first. Oh, I I can't see them, Ron. Um, okay. so, uh, Barb McMahon, Barbara McManus from RQD said, "Is this based on population?" Is what based on po the I the think district the districts? They are not. Correct. Well, I'm right. Not not the analysis that we did based on those four quadrants, Barbara. They're not. Um, I would suggest to you that further analysis would would you know we would we would change the those district boundaries and kind of move and slide it so that there's as close to equal population as possible in those those corridors. That that was important. Yeah, I just all this is Barbara McManus. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, the redistricting uh, exercise. Uh, based on the census population uh, will be conducted through RTD over the next couple of years. I don't, um, I don't know what the exact dates are. We were just notified that, um, that the numbers that we traditionally work with are probably not gonna be available until this summer. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out there that um, based on population, a lot of the district um, boundaries will be changing yeah no thank you very much hey justin bagley have you been able to unmute yourself melinda can you unmute justin um i mean he should have control but let me look he it says he's unmuted so it's an audio issue on his end unfortunately oh can you hear me now yeah we got you okay awesome Hi, everybody. Um, so this is my first meeting, um, I w um, and this is uh, super helpful, and it looks like quite a bit of work's gone into this. And I, I just you know, apologize if you've gone through this earlier. No worries. But um, going back to the presentation <clears throat> in which you know, 
talking about the problems we're trying to solve around equity, both social and geographic, about elevating voices. Um, they seem to be alluding to problems that don't have any specific examples listed or illust anything illustrative. So I'm gonna have having a hard time understanding, you know, if we were to choose a geographic boundary based upon, let's say county lines, I think that could be useful for solving problems in a certain way and probably make things worse in another way. Whereas travel shed is more transportation oriented, probably more driven by where people wanna come from and where they wanna go. Um, I mean, I'm just having a harder time. Like I, I see service planning as it stands today, largely driven by data. And with the introduction of service councils, I mean, all service planning has a big component of data and there's an element of politics as well. So creating the service council in and of itself, never mind its boundaries, are going to take that spectrum of how much data is considered along with other considerations and change it around. So I, I guess I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing which of these or some other boundary setting solves which problems because the problems aren't defined in a way that I can I can understand easily. Like what is the social equity problem we're trying to solve? What is the geographic equity? Um, so I just wanted to ask that and I apologize if you had covered it at a previous meeting. No, that's fine, Justin. No, good questions. Anybody have any any um any thoughts, comments they'd like to make, uh, particularly about the uh, you know service councils and what role they might have in partnering with RTD. Yeah, good. This is George Gerstel. Um, you know, listening to the previous um, accountability committee meetings, I, I came away with the, the understanding that one purpose of these is to um, provide more in, uh, a mechanism for more local input into what the transit system looks like serving the more local communities um, and including recognizing that there's a difference between the regional connections that need a more regional view versus the, the local services. So for instance, being familiar with Boulder County, the vast majority of trips are start and end within Boulder County. So it would make sense that to me to have the service councils be able to provide that local input and guidance and potential decision making on the services um, within that county, the local services. Um, and to that end, it also relates to, are these advisory to RTD board or do they have a more meaningful uh, decision-making role in, in how local services provided within these counties or whatever the local boundary is. The, the other comment or reaction I had to the what was presented in terms of the corridor-based um, approach or, or boundary is it assumes everything is going, those may, may, may make sense for regional services again but for local services it may not follow those those general um, regional travel sheds again being somewhat familiar with the boulder northwest area um, more people are commuting north into boulder along the 36 corridor than towards denver uh, so that's you have to kind of look specific specifically at what's the what are the characteristics of travel within each area and then the, the third point i make is this looks at just travel within the rtd boundary and again being more familiar with the north an increasing amount of commuters are coming into boulder from weld county larimer county and to, again important to look at the the travel characteristics within each area so I, you know, again, it, it makes sense to me to perhaps there's some combination where Boulder County is unique. I don't know, but the amount of tra transit um, usage that's within Boulder County is significant, and it makes sense to have um, that county level insight and oversight of transit. Um, so I just lay that out. I, you know, I think there's interesting statistics. I think regional travel should be have a regional 
and corridor based um, evaluation perhaps, but then have county based um, insight over the local services. Thank you, George. Any other comments on, on that point, Kathleen? Your mic is on, but I don't hear anything. Uh-uh. Is that better? There you are. Yeah, all right. It's amazing. We're all becoming IT experts. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Well, I, I just think it makes it's a good uh, segue uh, to um, comment af um, after George, because I think we share a lot of the same perspectives um on this and i just want to build from uh, george's comments i and also want to say thank you for all the work um, first the willingness to even look at the local service council approach i appreciate you doing that and all the research that you did to look at la metro as well as all the other examples um, across the country so I, I again there's not one magic version that's going to plug and play for us but it's really helpful to kind of see what others are doing and not only what are they doing today, but how did they get to where they are today? Because we might be, you know, in a similar situation, but we're in a prior era <laughs> um, that, than they are. So um, I find this really helpful. And I, I really um, want to emphasize the goal around that uh, bringing this decision making closer to home for our public and for our stakeholders and for our transit riders. And that's something that really resonated with me in these conversations is to to create a place and familiarity for people to bring their transit related questions and concerns and suggestions to a community based scale um, and to be able to talk with staff that they're familiar with elected officials that are familiar with and be able to have this kind of what I keep calling closer to home uh, conversation and input on the planning process like you said really more of a two way process and then more accountability that's at that localized level as well. So I think that goes hand in hand to create better customer service as well as build uh, trust. So I, I, I think this is a really important um, part of the work of the RTD Accountability Committee. And, and thank you for bringing this forward and having these workshops. Um, and I and looking, it was helpful to see all the different ways we could slice and dice this, you know, whether it's the districts or ge geographic or counties. And I, I guess from my perspective, especially after going through the formation processes for the Dr. Cog sub-regional forums, it just feels like the county scale is a really helpful way to go. There's a lot of pros, as, as you mentioned, Doug. Um, certainly trade-offs, there's trade-offs in, in all of these, but it gets to the guidance that I heard from the accountability committee around wanting to build off of existing organizational infrastructure. And it, again, we've, we've developed that a couple years ago. It's been in place. I think it's working really well. Um, and if there's a way to expand the memberships on that, like you were saying, to include um, our transit partners, include, you know, I would suggest including our um, housing and human services um, folks at the, again, each county has that kind of structure in place, human services, transportation. And then be able to add again other you know local stakeholders so that there's more of the, um, a collaboration approach to local service planning um, and another reason i like the county structure modeling it after, after the dr cog subregion is that with the dr cog process we retain the regional piece and the subregional piece and so some of these routes that we've been talking about like in our case, the Flatiron Flyer or the AB or probably other parts of the district, the rail, they would retain in that regional category. And then how do we start to look at what more of that service planning for those more localized routes? It was helpful for me to see your data today on the 88% internal trip making in Boulder County, and that matches very closely to the transit data that was shared in the Reimagine RTD process. So that's a good thing, right? All of our data is, is tracking. <laughs> um, I, I guess the other thing why I think the county structure works well, not only for our customers, but for our agencies, is that it, it's a place we already can track the dollars. We know the money that's being generated by each of our counties that's going to RTD for fee service and for fast tracks, and we can track back more readily what is that 
return on investment because RTD has already created that financial structure to track the dollars that way. So um, to me, I feel like when I cross check back to the goals and purpose and the intent of all of this, I feel like um, building upon the foundation from the Dr. Cog sub-regional forum um, structure would be an, an, I, uh, the, the best way to go. There's not a perfect way to go. <laughs> Um, and I do really appreciate you acknowledging the unique ways that people are traveling um, in Boulder County. So again, that's just my my thoughts on this initial um, presentation, but it'd be great to learn more from others as well. Um, my question had to do, and maybe this is more in the wrap up and next steps, but the time frame that you all are thinking of this um, happening, because I do think there's a lot of interest However, it ends up getting structured. There's going to be a lot of interest in figuring out how to make it happen. And it kind of may not be perfect when it comes out the gate, but how do we get started? So I'm just curious around the time frame piece. So again, thanks for all the work and the opportunity to weigh in. Great, thank you, Kath Kathleen, very much. Um, I know we have some folks in the queue, uh, Deborah and Mac. I, I I just want to mention real quick, Kath uh, Kathleen, on the on the on the time frame. Um, well, first of all, you know, these are simply recommendations, of course, back to the partners. Um, and, you know, if the, if this is one of the recommendations that they they would like to pursue, um, you know, it's going to require a lot more, obviously, work and detail to figure out and, and vet this out to the best of their ability. So with regards to an implementation timeline, I'm not even sure I could give you one, Kathleen, other than to know that, again, if this is... This is something that really catches the eye of the of the of the partners, that being RTD board, the governor's office, and the the transportation chairs in the legislature. Then um, you know there will be a next step, right, in in uh, in in uh, uh, figuring this out. Um, Deborah, before I let you go, we did have a, a question by from Tom Worker with regards to he said, "What's the underlying geography?" Uh, geography for of the dividing lines looks like a mixture of county lines and freeways. And Tom, I don't, I don't know um, if you want to speak or not. But the so the first map was 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 strictly based on on uh, county lines. The second map, which was the travel shed uh, map, that one was kind of buffers around major facilities. Um, and you know there was really there was. There was no more genius to it than that, quite honestly. It was just it was just to show that you know what what is possible. So I, I hope that answered your question. Uh, Deborah, you're up. Hi everyone. To those of you that have known me for 35 years, I apologize, but I want to give you a context that much like some of the other people in this space, I've been I have a new puppy that's chewing on a bone. Sorry, it's quite disgusting if there's background noise. I can't get away from him right now. Um, okay, so I've been in this space for a very long time, like Kathleen, like George, and others on this call, my colleagues in Jefferson County and Adams County. I um, agree with everything Kathleen said. She should. We should all be glad that we have agreement on those fundamental things to make service better, to make community the community heard, all those really great things. I'm not going to repeat what she said. However. I come out this very differently in that I'm, my parochial thing is I'm concerned that other counties may not be in such a strong point to do the work Boulder County is able to do around this. I think that there is a significant differentiation between where money comes from and how it should go back to those places. I don't disagree. How we work with equity and other things, that's a little finer grain and might fall into the regional service conversation. But what I would like to offer is I've been debugging Doug for months already. When he started this, and we started this idea of exploration with what California does and other places in the region, I jumped in and I said, hey, how about this? What I'm hearing from RTD directors is there is not a nexus necessarily between the work that their service planners do and what they do as leaders. So I started out with a proposal that said, let's do 15 service councils, councils and dog and building leaders said you're insane deborah and i'm like well all right i'll go the other way i'll go with this four geographic division i think that the opportunities and the best solutions are somewhere in between i think some of the existing bodies we have such as the sub-regional county forums play a super important role and we should figure out what role they have in this conversation 
I'm very concerned that service planning is not a role for sub-regional councils. I think it's a role for RTD, staff to staff, community input. So to me, what I want to make sure the problems that we're solving and the way we go about it go back to what the committees, the accountability committee, the governance committee, all those leaders are saying is community needs to be heard, community not being heard, RTD needs to do things differently. And then I would love it if people will go to work a little bit more on what that looks like. And I have lots of ideas, but I want to shut up because I see Mac and Sarah in the queue. So I want to end right. So I want to spread it around. So thank you for hearing me. Generally, I hope you got my concept that we we got some ways to go on this, in my strong opinion. We do, we do. Thank you, Deborah. You never disappoint. We appreciate you. <laughs> okay, Matt, hey, you're Doug. up, sir. Yes, sir. Who's that? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate that. Uh, good to be here with all uh, and really applaud the uh, accountability committee, all the subcommittees, uh, and certainly the staff and and uh, associated consultants supporting this overall effort. It's It's been a good ride and, and the ride's not over. And we're going to really, I think our objective is to deliver um, a lot of value and benefit at the end of the day to our constituents uh, and customers. And really, the, the, the transit reliant populations and vulnerable populations on that. So, on that note, I'm, I, I'm thinking some consideration in terms of uh, performance based elements and, and, and based on service uh, should be considered uh, in the formation of these districts, councils, the geography as such. Um, keeping in mind, we're looking at uh, at uh, characteristics such as nimbleness and flexibility, because we're gonna be trying a lot, I, I, su I suspect and hope, truly hope, that we're gonna be trying be tr trying a lot of different types of approaches to, to, to delivering transit uh, services to, to our customers. Uh, some pilots will be successful and will evolve into more uh, mainstream uh, and, and consistent and, and longer service. Uh, some won't, and, and there's a fair amount of risk involved on that. So it, it just strikes me as the, the ability for forums or councils, what, whatever the terminology, needs to be anchored close to the local jurisdictions um, because they, local jurisdictions have the ability, I think, to respond quickly uh, given, the, given the number of, of engaged partners uh, within those communities and 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 the and the benefits and and the feedback uh, that we receive on a regular basis on that. The, the certainly the county uh, the subregional county forms uh, have had had a history of collaboration uh, with throughout the tip uh, dual mode process dual model process on on that. So uh, you know I'm looking in our city we have Colfax a major corridor. Um, uh, vulnerable customers, uh, populations uh, to be um, uh, to continue to serve and to serve better, uh, both now and in the, in the future. Uh, and we've been quite successful in in bridging that uh, you know those two counties and, and linking those together in activities, projects, uh, transportation projects, particularly at a local level. Uh, on that, so. Uh, I, again, I think nimbleness, the ability, the flexibility, and the quick response uh, tends to suggest that that we that we engage local jurisdictions in in the county process, and and there may be uh, some refinements uh, to that, and and I'd be interested in in uh, in the conversations as we move forward. Available for questions uh, as always. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mac, very much, sir. Um, Sarah, if I may just hold you real quick, I believe. Uh, Rep Bridges was trying to get in one of our accountability committee members. So I just want to give him an opportunity. I don't know if it was timely for him to, to weigh in now versus after your comment. Just one sec. Brett, you, you have a comment? Well, I don't want to butt in, but I, I do want to say that just Dr. Cog has been terrific to work with. I think I can speak for all the county accountability committee members when I say that. It's it's also very true that they they have worked for two years on this idea of how you create uh, these effective sub-regional service uh, councils. And 
you know, LA is not always the example that we want to follow, <laughs> but uh, but there's certainly some ideas from a lot of different uh, transit agencies that the governor's committee did did look at, and I think uh, all the two years of work you work you put into the service councils, uh, I think, has a lot of value for us. The thing I wanted to mention is is a big part of this. You know, we can do whatever we want to do in terms of creating something, but I was really sensitive to the issue of how much burden it puts on RTD staff, because there really is uh, a limited amount of bandwidth you're going to get out of that. One thing that might lighten that is one of the things we're working on in the finance committee is the idea of having a publicly accessible dashboard where people can go in and look at financial data, look at operations data, look at planning data, and it would provide a lot of the materials that otherwise might uh, essentially come by request from all of the service councils. If they can agree with what they need and what they want to monitor, for example, on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, uh, having a mechanism like that to get it. It's a little bit like what, uh, what CDOT has built. They built a forward-facing uh, uh, dashboard but a lot simpler, just mostly mostly a, an easy way to go online and get access to all this information. And so that's something we can talk about how we could build some of that operations and planning uh, data uh, as well. Uh, it, you know, it, as, as Deborah was saying, I think that, that there has to be a process of cooperation and conjunction, but it's also true at a certain point, it just gets, gets too complicated and slows things down. And and in the end, RTD is, is responsible for balancing their budget. And so we have to figure out how to, how to minimize the burden on them in this while engaging everyone in this. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you, sir, very much. And appreciate the kind words too uh, regarding Dr. Cox's staff. We've, Matthew and Ron, and they're doing some great work for sure. Uh, Sarah Grant, Broomfield's own, you're up. Thanks for your patience. Sure, no problem, thank you. First of all, I wanted to thank everyone that has been involved with this um, for the many, many months. I know that there are a lot of issues to try to unravel, um, so I appreciate everyone's efforts. Um, I agree with a lot of the committee where they're, they've outlined what the problems we're trying to solve and, and the purpose. Um, trying to improve collaboration and making sure local communities are heard, the transit users themselves, um, local agencies. Um, but I, I, I'm also hesitant about the service council model. Um, and I, I'm, I'm actually really curious what the new general manager, she has extraordinary amount of experience. And um, I think we can offer these suggestions. And I think starting at the base of these questions um, around you know, the, the purpose of, of what the committee is trying to solve and the problems and getting some feedback. Maybe service councils are the way to do that, um, but every county is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I also agree that the forum, the existing forums might have a place in this, um, but that will need to be further defined. Um, for Broomfield, again, you know, all of our routes go through other counties, so um, that could be challenging. I know that we, we mentioned RTD resources, but local resources as well, and on our elected officials, they are already really stretched. Um, I will note that they do want a larger voice, um, but I think we just need to be cautious of how we move forward, and are we creating another layer, and are we actually solving these problems from the outset? So I, I think that there's an extraordinary amount of expertise with our new general manager, and I would hate to um, you know, handcuff her with a directive. And I'd like to hear a little bit more about the, the transit experts at RTD on how we can actually solve these problems together um, cooperatively. Thank you. Very good, sir. No, well put. Um, I will say this, that you know, with regards to, you know, again, these are simply recommendations. Um, they are, as part of the scope, of, of this, of the work of the RTD Accountability Committee. Um, RTD has, I don't know, what is 45, 60 days, whatever, to respond to any recommendations. So, you know, at that time, they can, you know, there's opportunity there to suggest other viable options for, for um, um, 
you know, try to mitigate some of the issues and concerns that local governments might have, that which is the reason for for these um, uh, sub-regional service councils. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think there's there's opportunities there. I think if nothing else, that the the recommendations will at least it it suggests it suggests a way, right, to to help um, you know enhance this two-way collaboration and partnership. Um, with RTD and you know maybe there's other ways and RTD I'm sure they they're smart folk over there too they can they can recommend some other some some uh, some ways of getting there that might be different than this one so thank you um, anyone on RTD staff want to say anything you're more than welcome to nope I guess I guess I wouldn't mind offering up a comment, Doug. Mark, yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, I, I think we often we are, and I'm new to this. I I wasn't at the first one, so I apologize for missing that. This sounds like really interesting stuff, um, and and maybe get some over some of the cynicism that people have about about RTD and and everything else. And probably a lot of that's unjustified, but it's it's there nonetheless. Um, we all get a lot of cynicism these days, don't we? <laughs> um, is that we often talk about getting people from where they live to where they work. And I think something else, there was just a news story on Channel 4 at lunch about places that are food deserts. And I think the other thing too, besides just getting people where they live and where they work, is getting them where they need to shop. Um, especially some of our our more vulnerable communities, uh, the the senior housing place that, that my mother-in-law was living in and hopes to get back into now. Um, you know, they had a they had a shuttle service that ran people to local grocery stores because the just the the buses weren't going there in a way that made that viable for them. Um, so I think I think some of those kind of conversations too, um, talking more about the local trips and not just people trying to get to work and back, kind of thing. I think getting people that are that are in food desert areas to places where they can shop, not just for food but also for for other things that they need, um, I think would is another really important consideration. Thank you, Mark, very much. No, very well stated. Doug, Angie. Hi, Angie. Hi, Doug. Sorry, my camera's not working. No um, worries. Listen, first of all, I want to thank everyone on this call for your um, for your comments, your insight, and your sensitivity about the issues that you're bringing up. And um, you know, I've been a community advocate for uh, decades. I'm not going to tell you how many, but it's been many. And you've touched on everything. And I think in touching on everything, you're seeing how complex um, the issues are that are affecting our communities, affordable housing, food deserts, um, disenfranchised communities, people who speak different languages. I mean, it's the entire gamut. And keeping in mind that RTD is a transit system, our job is to move people from point A to point B to be equitable. The other thing that I'd like to talk about for a second, Kathleen brought up about equity. And, you know, as I delve into this, and as a Latina who's been working in this field for a very, very long time, equity is a very complex issue as well. And um, I don't know if you know this, but RTD just passed um, a motion to start a JEDI program, Justice, Equity, uh, Diversity, and Inclusion. And what I'm learning is that that definition has changed drastically over the last year and how do you encompass it? So I think that we have a lot of work ahead of us together collectively as regional leaders who care about our community and wanna provide viable transit services. But um, I have to tell you, it is, it is a little bit overwhelming when you look at all the spokes coming into transit and it has changed systemically over the last five years. So I, I just want to put that on the table. Doug, thank you so much for hosting this one. And again, I want to thank all of you for being part of this most important discussion. Thank you, Angie, very much. And I'm not that she needs any introduction, but in case there are those on the phone that don't know uh, who Angie is, that's Angie R Rivera Malpietti. She's the, she's the board chair of RTD. So thank you, Angie. Appreciate you joining us this afternoon. I know, I know you're busy. Of course. Any other? Oh, Kathleen, go ahead. Great, thanks. It's really helpful to hear all of the comments and questions and suggestions from everybody. And again, really appreciate the thoughts around 
equity in all the trip types that people are trying to use transit um, to make and um, today and into the future. I mean, I, I keep thinking about the time we're in and how do we collectively together bounce forward and come through COVID stronger than we were before and continue to offer great mobility solutions for people. Um, I thought we've um, been kind of thinking around at the in our conversations is that you know for many years the predominant view has been if we need transit it's all on RTD shoulders and what can RTD to deliver all of that transit and what we've been working on in, in Boulder County is how do we grow the partnerships to deliver transit because RTD can't do it all alone neither can our local communities do it all alone we've got to find ways to partner grow our transportation and transit related resources so we can leverage dollars and be able to do more types of transit that are tailored to the community needs. Somebody mentioned the grocery store trip, for example. I'm sorry if there's an echo, is that is it bad? It's not too bad. Okay, I'll, I'll be quick. So one of the advantages I think of these local forums is a way to actually raise more money for transit. When, again, I think all of our communities have found, and we've seen it statewide that, and nationally, that people are willing to invest close to home. And ballot initiatives pass in local communities, they pass, you know, at in, in a county scale. And if that's a way to help people see, back to Rutt's point about the dashboard, have accountability on the dollars, we can actually use these local service councils to help grow the amount of resources that can come in and and um supplement what rtd could do and not put all of this on rtd's shoulders but help us at the local level be a partner to to deliver existing transit as well as future transit so to me that's just another um value behind creating these these local councils so thank you well, thank you kathleen and, and i think that's a very interesting point um you know i know even as part of the conversations that have been had through reimagine rtd um you know, I think we all recognize that that relationship and partnership with local governments to provide local funding to help offset, you know, some of the, you know, the, the fund, the costs associated with enhancing transit service within our communities is probably something that's, that's going to have to happen. Um, and, and you're right. And I've had conversations with uh, other elected officials about, you know, this concept of service councils and having you know, more of a collaborative conversation and partnership with RTD, would, they would be more apt to, uh, to, to be a, a voice in support of additional local funding. So it, it's interesting. And I also wanted to raise, and I, and I truly do appreciate, you know, Angie being on the phone. And I thought I saw Troy Whitmore was on for a little bit earlier, um, the RTD board uh, members being on the call because you know, I, I, I dare I speak for it for the committee, but um, but I think you know the conversations and Rod and Crystal, um, please back me up. I mean, this is you know, there's nothing antagonistic or, you know, with with the RTD board on this stuff. Um, the the recommendations we hope are practical and pragmatic in nature for the RTD board. Um, and something like this, I would hope, um, you know, service council or some reasonable facsimile of that, whatever it might end up looking like. Um, I would hope there would be value to the RTD board to utilize those those forums to kind of, you know, ferret out, you know, additional stuff that um, that they think is important, you know, as far as service delivery that they would like to learn more about and and put put those those sub regional councils to work to do to to do some in order to better inform them. So anyway, I'll just leave it there. I see uh, Crystal turned on her phone at uh, her video. I don't know if she wanted to make a comment. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to, to back you up. <laughs> um, I mean, really, I think uh, the, the goal and the intention is to um, walk a fine line between uh, being an independent um, accountability committee and, and doing um, what we were charged with to to take a holistic review of what things look like um and that's why we have just you know a broad intersection of folks you know to the table but um we've brought rtg along the way this entire time so i feel confident that we have uh positively walked that line of um like a gentle um oversight but 
you know, needed um, and, and tough conversations, but with the, the support and guidance um, with RTD, because really it, we do no one any, any good if all we're proposing is impractical recommendations. Um, and, but we also do no one any good if we're not really doing our job to truly be independent as well. So that, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. And Doug, I'll just add one more thing. Crystal, thank you so much for saying that. Uh, this really truly is a partnership and RTD is uh, very grateful to be working with this group and in the community. I would be remiss if I didn't say we have at least 10 RTD board staff on this call and they sit in on everything so that we can collectively look at all of the issues and um, and concerns as well as potential solutions together. So I want to thank the staff for taking their time to to sit on these calls. So th that's all. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Angie. OK, we do have uh, some additional folks in the queue now. Uh, Alex you're, is Alex, then Kent, then Justin. So Alex, you're up, sir. Thank you, Doug. Um, this is Alex Hatter from Boulder County. I just wanted to build on something Kathleen said about how the sub-regional councils can bring in more money to the district. Um, I think an excellent example of how that's played out at one of our peer agencies is from the Seattle metro area and Sound Transit, their, their regional transit body. Um, they have what's called sub areas that are divided up based largely on county, a combination of county and geographic boundaries. And that's been really instrumental for their success at the ballot with the voters over the past couple of decades um, and being able to show the voters where their money is going and that it's staying locally. And they have very, very similar um, challenges um, with as, as our district of building out a radial uh, rapid transit network. Um, and, and, it's, and it's been very successful to be able to continually show their voters where the money is going, how it's being accounted for, and that those um, their sub areas don't change over time since they are based on county political boundaries and then very sharp um, geographic features like the lakes and sounds out there. Um, so I think I think it's a it's a great example of how you know in, in the in the current structure it's somewhat difficult to imagine um, a, a future ballot measure for RTD passing right now um, given the tenor of the electorate. But um, I think the sub areas open up an opportunity to show voters. Um, how their money is staying closer to home and, and opens up that opportunity to bring in more money um, for, for transit in the district. Interesting. Thank you, Alex, very much. Kent Mormon, sir. Yeah, um, my question, Doug, and, and maybe this to the committee, um, are if are, if you're recommending to look at sub-regional, are you now recommend travel sheds or the county system, or are you just saying it needs to be explored further? Uh, because uh, Doug, as you know, uh, having been one of those that have gone through this regional, sub-regional, there's a lot of detail uh, oh, yeah. that needs to be worked out. And I didn't know if you were now leave it more open so that could be discussed at, further, or if you were now recommend one form or another. No. Ken, thank you for the question. Um, listen, I, I mean, obviously, I'll, I can give you my opinion as staff working on this. That you know, it's it's my intent at least to provide a couple different options to to the to the committee for their consideration. But I would suggest, because as you suggest, that there is just the complexities that are associated with this are so immense that you know, I was just in my mind, I'm providing those as possible examples of how how you could you know, divide up the boundaries if this is something that is of interest to the powers to be. Um, but then obviously, you know, the, the further further work would have to be done to ultimately determine if it, whether it be based on counties or travel shed or something else. So, it, okay. So it's mainly just to be a recommendation at that point of, to further investigate. Yes, sir. Okay. George, George, you have a response, a question to that? Yeah, yeah, just, you know, I appreciate all the comments that have been made and what, building on what Kent was really talking about is there's an opportunity for a, a hybrid where in some cases it may make sense for the county boundary to be most appropriate and for the rest of the other parts of the metro area, perhaps the corridor based or some other um, boundary. So I, I don't think we need to look at one size fits all. Right. Um, it was is you know I was surprised and interested to see at the the proportion of trips that stay within counties throughout the region 
Um, Broomfield's a little bit of an outlier, Broomfield and Denver, but most of the other counties have a significant majority of trips staying within their boundary, um, which is surprising and also um, in, indicates a, a perhaps an important piece of information. Um, the, the other point I'd make is, uh, building on what Alex and Kathleen said, is this is an opportunity to, to bring for counties and local money to be brought to the equation um, to work with RTD to solve um, transit, transportation mobility problems. So it's a way to really expand the pie um, if we can build the confidence of locals that they have a say in, in what happens and how the money's spent. But um, just a couple observations. Thank you, sir, very much. Justin. Yes, uh, this will be the last time you hear from me, sorry. But I, but I did have one follow-up. Um, okay. so, so getting back to the slides uh, and looking at the purpose slide, and there's a lot of good stuff in there about communication and collaboration. And, and, and look, let's face it, like you pointed out earlier, it's not always easy to get to a public meeting. I, I'm fully on board with these ideas about kind of opening and broadening these channels for, for input and communication. Um, when I do get to the last bu uh, bullet, it talks about, you know, potentially having these councils produce something, right? So a plan in this case. And I just, I wonder what, you know, A, again, you know, are the low income and some minority communities, you know, feel left out, feel underserved? Is it documented? I mean, Title VI, that's what that's there for, but it goes beyond that, right? Like it could be more is needed, but I do wonder about this idea where you trigger or actually, you know, now what do we do if, if a council creates a plan? I mean, it, does that, you know, we do planning um, and actually we're doing some planning for exactly this topic right now at the city. And we, we very heavily leverage RTD's input and coordinating services. So I just, I just wonder once we start to get into some more concrete products that these councils could produce, that we just think through what, what it would take for that to be effective and not you know, have competing plans uh, potentially that we can't reconcile. Very good. Yeah, great point. Thank you, Justin. Okay. Um, Deborah, you had a comment here. Do you want to say it instead of me reading it? <laughs> um, I was just saying, the, it was actually a couple minutes ago, folks were asking about the timing for finishing up the work of the accountability committee and um i just saying in the chat it's not going to go on forever i don't think that was the intention so really where i was going with this is um if you could share or melinda could put in the chat the schedule that the accountability committee governance committee is actually lined out for the next few months and what they hope to take on that might be just helpful information and then i was going to make the nexus to why it's so important that we're all in this meeting now the different leaders from rtd and local government and staff because we're going to have to keep figuring this out. Um, it's not going to go away for us. And then the last thing I wanted to say is that I respectfully disagree with what George said about the travel because, Doug, I see your slide. That's why I asked about what is this the travel for? Because on the other side of it, there are so many more metrics and data about, well, how much Every, every county is commuting in and out commuting. And what are the purpose, of, as alluded to by some of my other colleagues, what is the purpose and need of those transit trips? Are they taken on in support by a local government or a nonprofit or a partnership of all? I, I, just, I just cannot preclude saying it's all within a county because that is not true for the, the bus service that I'm involved with for Westminster and Jefferson County. And I live in Boulder, so I get it. I want Boulder to be great, but I also want Jefferson County and Adams to be great in my day job. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah, very much. Um, yeah, we can provide to you kind of the the, the schedule, upcoming schedule for for the governance subcommittee. Um, and to Deborah's point, uh, you know, we really need to wrap up any recommendations from any of our three subcommittees by the end of May. Um, we're required to produce a report. Um, and quite frankly, the end of May is really stretching. It's probably the middle of May and then providing a report um, by the end of June or July 1, whatever it is, um, back to the partners. Um, so yeah, we're planning on wrapping up this part of our discussion within the next next meeting or two. 
Um, we're beginning to have conversations about partnerships, um, looking a little bit at the RTD uh, boundary itself and uh, the board structure. Those are the things that are that are on the list of things to do for the for the governance subcommittee. So that all has been done by the end of the year. So we obviously we're just you know we can't get into the to the real real you know real real deep details on any of this, but hopefully that we can provide some pragmatic uh, recommendations. Um, okay, thank you. So let me see here. Uh, Tom Worker, you're next. Yeah, thank you. And uh, good discussion and obviously a lot of hard work has been put in by a lot of different people uh, to present this information. I want to uh, add my support or add my, my voice of support to some of the comments made earlier uh, today about keeping these districts or councils based on political jurisdictions, whether that be county-based or a combination of city-based, simply because if we want to uh, make this uh, truly accountable and approachable to our citizens and residents, uh, we don't want to tell them that the first thing they need to do is go to some random website and enter their address to figure out what council uh, they belong in. Um, we should just be able to say, well, do you live in this county or this city? In that case, you're part of this district. Um, it, it will make it much easier for them to understand. RTD districts right now or wards are tough enough for residents to understand. We shouldn't be adding another, um, another difficulty to their participation in this process. Yeah, very good point, Tom. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir, very much for your comment. Um, Brian Weimer, do you want do you want to talk, Brian? You want me to read that? Where's Brian? Brian's never shy. There you are. Thank you. I assume you can hear me. We can um, hear you. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the issues that you brought up as a con to the uh, county boundaries was, you know, kind of the coordination or uh, bus routes operating in multiple counties and stuff. And, you know, we still had that same issue, right, on joint projects with the forums. Sure. And I think we've, um, I think that was an opportunity to really enhance coordination. So I don't know necessarily that it's a con. It may actually be a, a pro when you look at it in terms of building coordination, um, uh, building relationships, um, and looking at, at the needs of both uh, jurisdictions or multiple jurisdictions that may be being serviced by that. So um, I look at it as, you know, there's something that we should you know, look at and sit back and say, you know, this did bring up opportunities where we didn't have before. And I think that that's a positive. And I think that could be um, really an opportunity here with a, a, a county boundary for these service councils. So uh, I throw that out. And I suppose that could be also within, you know, coordination efforts if you go the other route, but I do like the idea and agree with a lot of what is being said today that, you know, you're you're able to be responsive to those constituents that are within your political boundary. And I think there's probably some importance to that in terms of building trust and uh, um, uh, reliability and, and even transparency of what we're really trying to accomplish. So realizing there's a lot more work to be done but uh, I think it's a good start, and thank you to all that's worked on this. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate the comments. Um, Kathleen has a question in there. Want me to read it, Kathleen? Or... Okay. <laughs> Will there be future workshops like this? A good discussion today. Much appreciated. Seems like more discussion brainstorming would be helpful. So I, I'll tell you this. Um, probably not on this topic, Kathleen, but um, I, I've also found these useful, and I know I've heard subcommittee members say the same thing, that they're, these, they find these very valuable, and quite frankly, it was their idea to have them to begin with. Um, so for the other topics that the Governance Committee will take on, um, I anticipate that we will have uh, future ones of this, just to kind of use, you know, you guys as a sounding board on this, make sure that, you know, 
what the conversations the subcommittees are not are, are having you don't think are absolutely crazy and and uh so you could provide some some input so yeah i i uh I think everybody's uh, uh, really, really appreciate these conversations. So yeah, we'll have some more. Great, thank you. Sure thing. Yeah. Do I, do I have one, sure, one yes. more question? Um, I think in the ag earlier agenda or earlier meetings, there was discussion of what are the different ways to measure equity in terms of allocation of funding. And it was everything from population employment, uh, percent of uh, different populations, et cetera. Were you still planning to take a look at that, at different op options for how to measure um, funding allocation? Um, I see Rudd has his hand up, so I'm gonna let Rudd address that as a committee member and chair of the Finance Committee. <laughs> Thank you, Doug, and, and thanks for the question, George. Uh, when we started, when the committee was first formed, one of the things that, that we all agreed that we needed to do was to create an equity filter. And every one of the, of the recommendations, and these are recommendations, in the end, we don't really carry any, any enforcement way. We just make recommendations. But they all must pass through that filter. And, uh, and it is, for example, there's some legislative changes that we're recommending and, and we worked with RPD on some of these to give them greater flexibility in the hope that that this will help them be able to manage their the finances and have more opportunities there. Uh, but the we we spent a couple of weeks just talking about what are all the equity filters that we need to look at for all of these all of these uh, different recommendations. So it, it's integral to that, and geographic equity is is also one of those considerations. But it's integral to everything that all my fellow members of of uh, this committee of the of, of the RT the Accountability Committee are doing, and every one of the subcommittees basically looks at that issue constantly. Thank you, Rob, very much. And then on the geographic equity side, George. Um, you know, I I mentioned earlier that RTD is planning on uh, they're, they're taking on a study and actually we're providing some funding associated with that. We, Dr. Cog, as part of our UPWP stuff, to to look at um, uh, you know kind of the supply and demand side of of funding. Um, you know, where does where's the where are the where does the funding funding come from and what is the value of the service that's provided to to the residents within the community. Um, and I know that, let me see here, who did I see on the phone? Oh, Brian, I saw Brian Welsh earlier. I don't know, Brian, you wanted to share any additional details on that, but that's, that's my understanding is what the, what the intent of that study will do. So, so yeah, I think that, you know, any, anything that we provide as part of our recommendation would hopefully feed into, to that study associated with that. But, um, but we're not going to provide specific recommendations on what variables to use in in geographic equity purposes for 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 allocation or anything like that. And if I could just make one last comment, I I probably spent more time thinking about the Northwest line than than any of the other several other topics that we have, and and how you get to a, a real equitable solution to that. And I got to tell you, it is. It is a tough problem. I think some of the ideas are going to have to be uh, uh, things that we would pilot some things out of the box in, in order to try to find a way. The idea of, of 2030 as a solution, so much changes, or 2050 as a solution, so much changes in so many ways that I, I think a rail line finished by 2050 is not a, is not a solution. But it's a, it is, a, I would say, a very challenging problem in part because there's so much rail that's been built and so much of a debt burden associated with that. Thank you, Rod, very much. Any other comments, questions? Gee whiz, it's 2.28. There's never been a Dr. Cog meeting that's finished on time. We can't have it. <laughs> is there anything else? Well then, not hearing any, again. Oh, George, go ahead. 
So, so yeah, you're very I'm much just going to thank you. Thank you for the work and convening the meeting. Thank you, sir, very much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. And we will. We'll have some additional uh, roundtables. And um, golly, I mean, this is coming at us fast and furious, right? We're meeting seven times a month with, with through the various subcommittees and the full committee. Um, and I'd like to give you, of course, a little bit more um, uh, leeway with regards to your calendar and that. Um, so I'm, I'll really, really try to do that. But I appreciate your willingness and your flexibility to jump on when uh, when we can get these in. But uh, we'll uh, we'll be reaching out to you real soon. And again, thank you all very much. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces I haven't seen in a while. And um, and uh, till next time, have a great weekend. And we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank, thank, thank you, Doug. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thank you.